I'll teach you everything else you need to know about Math Library in five minutes. Let's cover some more cool math things. No copyright infringement intended. I just meant like things in math that happen to be cool, not the cool math website. Anyways, math.pow is just another way of doing an exponent, like three to the power of two, which gives us nine. And again, the order matters. So two to the power of three is gonna be eight, not nine, because yeah, they're different answers. To do the opposite of this though, you can do math.sqrt for square root. And this gives you the square root of any number. It takes in one number like 225. What is the square root of 225? I don't know. Oh, it's 15. Tick, this little guy, he's not exactly a part of the math library. He's kind of his own little thing, but I thought it fit the theme. This is basically how much time in seconds has passed since January 1st, 1970. It seems like a really useless thing to know, but I'll show you a cool use of it. If we set local start of game variable equal to tick, it will let us know the time that the game started. We can then use this to see how much time has elapsed if we task dot wait, I don't know, a few seconds. And then if we do wait a few seconds, we can then see how much time has elapsed since the start of the server by doing the current time minus the time at the start of the game. And then we can just print that out. See, five seconds has passed. Ooh, we can use this to see if task.wait is more exact than just regular wait. Ooh, task.wait is, it is better because there was another zero here. Ooh, just a little bit though. So yeah, this is a pretty neat thing you can use. And if you're creative, you can find more uses for it. Math.random gives you a random number. You put in the lower number and the higher number, and then it'll give you a random value between that range. For example, if we do one through four, it'll give us a random number one through four, and it happened to be one. We can even make this negative number and make it give us a value between negative two and two, zero. Let's say you want a random number between zero and one. You can't really get like a decimal because it only prints out whole numbers. But what you can do is ask it for a random value zero to 10 and then divide it by 10. Like let's say we get nine, nine divided by 10 is 0.9. So that'll give us a decimal rounded to the nearest 10th place. And if you want like to the hundredth place, you just make this a hundred and divide it by a hundred and so on. And again, if you want it between a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth between zero and five, you can change this to 500. And yeah, there's creative ways to get things that you want. I hope this gives you an idea for any other scenario that might happen to come up for you. Let's go back to one comma four. Something I want to show you is math.randomseed. Computers are really bad at being random. So they have to base off the randomness off something pre-existing. We can assign that pre-existing number, but if you want it to be as random as possible, you should change it to something that changes. What is something that we could easily assign it to that happens to be a number that changes every single second? Tick. Right, so if we assign it to tick, this helps more randomness in quotation marks or your math.random numbers. So I like to start off my scripts with math.random seed tick near the top in case I'm gonna use anything random later on. Next two things I wanna show you are constant. The first one is math.huge and you're really not gonna have much use for this a lot of the time. It's basically a really big number that's bigger than any other number. So for all intents and purposes, infinity, but like it's really not. Computers can't really handle infinity, you know this. Another constant, I'll show you guys so you can stop making fun of me because I can only round to 3.14159, that's all I know. But I don't need to know, I can just use math.pi and that returns pi for, or good enough pi, okay.